Hi everyone, today I wanted to talk about what to do when a curriculum or your child working through that curriculum is not meeting your expectations and how to kind of make the curriculum work without lowering your expectations of what you want to see your child doing uh, or how you want to see your child doing the work, what you're wanting them to um, get from the curriculum and also using that to help identify um, maybe additional teaching that needs done or learning gaps that need kind of filled in. So I'm going to use Curiosity Chronicles as my example today and something that we've been working through with my seventh grader. So um, if you're not familiar with Curiosity Chronicles Snapshots of Modern History, it's a pretty uh, a pretty beefy chunk of information here. I mean, I think it's going to be a total of three volumes. This is just volume one. But if you compare um, different levels of Curiosity Chronicles, modern is, there's a lot of information in it. Um, there's a lot squeezed into every page. And there's a lot of depth within it. So this has been going well and we've done we've done previous editions of Curiosity Chronicles. The um, we did part of Ancients and we did Early Modern last year. We've done History Quest, um, and we always tend to. I see this a lot actually in in homeschoolers who use Curiosity Chronicles or History Quest. That's that we don't tend to do a lot of the activity pages or answering the questions. I see a lot of oh we'll just do them orally or you know this isn't really important. We're just listening to it. But so in our homeschool, being able to answer these questions is really important to me. Um, there's a lot to this reading. And so when my kids do Curiosity Chronicles, we don't do it as a group anymore. So they're doing it independently. Listen to it on our Yodo player while they read along with the text, which is great. I want them to work with that information a little bit more. So we do do a lot of the activity pages. Um, I did recently cut it down. We just do, like my seventh grader just does the vocabulary and then the comprehension questions. But the comprehension questions are, I mean, you need to, you need to dig a little. You need to be able to kind of extrapolate um, from what you read pull different pieces and parts in, I feel like, to answer the question. I mean, not all of them, but they're not just simple, like what year did this happen or where did this take place? They're a little bit more involved than that. And so what I was noticing um, in my seventh grader is that while she would answer the qu questions, and they weren't always necessarily wrong, but they weren't always really answering the question, if that makes any sense. And I think it's a really important skill to be able to thoroughly answer some of these questions about what you've read. So uh, we've been struggling a little bit in that the answers she was giving were not the answers that I wanted. And one of the problems is, you can see here, they give you hardly any lines to write your answer. Um, like for most of these, you definitely need more than like two or three lines. So that was problem one. She was writing her answers based on the space that she had. And we would talk about it and I would try to kind of get some more out of her. Um, and it would, I don't know, it just wasn't really working the way I wanted it to. So I guess I'm making this video because I want you to know you don't have to lower your expectations of the, um, the curriculum or of your child, but you may need to do some additional instruction with your child and this, this issue that we're having really has nothing to do with history. It has nothing to do with the subject. This is something that I see in a lot of subjects for a lot of kids this age, is that their answers are not very thorough. And I think it's so important to be able to, um, to write well enough and to put the information that you read together well enough to answer some more complex questions. So we were getting um, really, <laughs> Not, no map work done that day, apparently. We were getting really kind of short answers, and I wanted more. And like I said, they weren't always wrong, but they weren't always right, if that makes any sense. So I thought, I need to work with her. Like, I, I really like this curriculum, and I don't want to give it up. 
but I want more from her. And I want her to kind of dig deep and be able to really get out of this curriculum all that it has to offer. So I thought I'd show you kind of what we did and how I kind of scaffolded some instruction for her. Um, <clears throat> so what I realized is she hadn't really had a lot of instruction on how to answer a question in the way that these questions are asked. So a couple of things that we started doing. So the first is, I've mentioned this book before, Learning How to Learn. She and I are working through this this year. Um, and in the very beginning, we learned about doing a picture walk um, before you're ready to read a chapter in a textbook or something like that. Going through and kind of looking at the pictures or diagrams, reading some of the headings or bold words to kind of give your brain, uh, get your brain ready to uh, read through it. They describe it as like a closet and the picture walk gives you the hangers where you can organize the information you're reading. And without the hangers, the clothes just fall on the floor into a jumble. So um, we use this technique a lot and I don't know why we weren't using it here, but that would look like before you read, um, before she would read like chapter nine, she would just kind of flip through and read some of the pictures or the captions. Um, if there were, you know, things bolded or, you know, look at the timeline, just a quick little look through to kind of get her brain ready. This takes extra time. And so I don't know if your middle schooler is like my middle schooler, but they, she doesn't like things that take extra time, even though she really loves history. Um, you know, in general, she wants to finish her school day. So, but that is something that we added in. And then <clears throat> I was going back and just question by question going through with her. Um, but what I did last week, I think, was I went through and I read um, the selection that she had read, the chapter that she had read. And I read the questions ahead of time. And I went through because she did answer them and I didn't, I, I wanted more from her answers. So I went through, you can't really see because I probably, because I wrote really light, I want to be able to erase it. But I went through, there were four comprehension questions for this chapter. And I just kind of marked, and I wrote a number one, the answer to number one is kind of in this area. And then I did the same thing for number two, which came over to this page here. Same thing for number three, I can't see it where I put it right now. Oh, down in here. And then the same thing for number four. And you might be thinking, well, <laughs> you're just giving her the answer, but not really, because she's still got to read and kind of pull some pieces and parts to kind of put her answer together. So we started with that. Um, she went through and she uh, worked on her answers based on the things that I marked. And that was really, really helpful, but it still wasn't, you know, it still wasn't enough in my opinion. So from there, I did a lot of research to figure out what skill does she need to be able to answer these questions in the way that I want her to answer them. And so uh, I ended up on Teachers Pay Teachers. So there's a lot of good information in here, but I needed more specific in a strategy to teach her to um, answer questions fully. And so I came across the race strategy. You may be familiar with it. I hadn't heard of it before. Um, but basically, uh, the acronym stands for, R stands for restate, turn the question into a statement to start off your first sentence. A is answer all parts of the question, which is uh, another thing we struggle with, is you know sometimes questions will ha ask multiple things and oftentimes we're only answering one of those things. C to get cite to give a specific example from the text and then E oops to explain how your quote supports your answer. And I think this is really important. Oh, I think it's all really important. Um, so this is another I bought a, a bundle uh, from Teachers by Teachers. This is Emma Oliver is the name of the, this creator. So here we just get a little bit more information. And so I went over this with her. Uh, it has some ideas for 
how to introduce when you're about to reference the source in your answer. And then I had, because I bought the bundle, I think there were a couple different age groups of material in there. So I started with the younger one and they gave you a little selection here to read. And then they went through and gave you a sample answer. And they marked throughout it where the R, the A, the C, and the E were in their answer. So I thought that was really helpful. And then from there, they had a bunch of different reading selections that your student could work through. So we did one. This was a shorter one, um, but it did talk about kind of marking in the text to kind of help you. She didn't do it in this one, but she did do it in the next one I'm gonna show you. So we did that to kind of start off, and then I moved on to a more in-depth um, source text. And again, it shows you the answer that they wrote and shows you where they put each of those um, pieces in their answer. And so then, um, again, they gave you a bunch of different um, little articles you could use. So we just read about the Red Cross, I think within the past couple weeks in history. So I thought, oh, that's perfect. So we pulled this one and again, I kind of worked through or talked her through it and then she went on her own, underlined the things and then she kind of wrote her answer here at the bottom. Did this take a little time? Yes, but it wasn't too bad. And it, um, I feel like it really gave her a roadmap for how to answer these questions the way that I want her to answer them. And that's not her fault that she, you know, didn't, wasn't answering the way I wanted because she'd never been given any direct instruction on how to do that. Um, so what this curriculum did for me is allowed me to see a gap in her learning and gave me the chance to say, hey, we need to do some additional instruction that is not related to history at all, but I feel like you need this skill in order to get the most out of this curriculum. So after we worked through these, and there's more, I'm gonna to continue to pull these out just for practice, um, and I'll probably use them with my fourth grader as well. But after we worked through these, then we went into the next chapter we were on, which I think was chapter nine. And in addition to that picture walk that I talked about in here, or as part of the picture walk, I guess, in addition to going through and doing the picture walk through the book, um, we did a, you know, a little walk through the questions ahead of time uh, so that she would have an idea of what she was going to be looking for when she was reading. So, you know, we went through, there's more on the back. Um, and then she was able to go through and read. Now, what I'm gonna have her do next time is to actually kind of mark in pencil um, as she reads. She did not do that this time, but I, I am gonna have her do that next time. Um, and I would, her answer, it meant, went much better today. She was able to follow the race strategy a little bit better. We still need more practice with it. Um, and the other thing that I started doing is I give her a sheet of lined paper for her to put her answers on. And I don't want her to use the uh, lines in here because there's just, there's not enough room for what she's going to need to do. So this no longer causes her anxiety of how she's how is she gonna fit her answer on this small amount of lines. Um, we just have a whole sheet of lined paper and she can take notes on the side and then write her answer. Um, so I got much more kind of longer and in-depth answers um, with this week's chapter than we had previously. So I didn't have to say, um, oh, this curriculum is not working. And I didn't have to um, lower my expectations and say, okay, we just won't do the comprehension questions or uh, good enough, we'll just move on. I, it's your answer is close enough. By just taking a little bit of time and seeing what I could find um, to help give her some, a strategy that she could use to better answer the question. Are there other strategies out there that might work? Probably, 
Um, but I just really liked that this one was very, um, very easy to remember with just the four letters at Spell Race. And I also particularly liked this uh, bundle that I bought because of just visually it's very appealing and it's just easy to follow with just a little article. And then here's a sample, here's how you do this. And then here's a chance for you to do it on your own. So I don't know if this is a helpful type of video or not. You can let me know. Uh, but I thought I would share it in case any of you are kind of in the same boat. And it, it doesn't have to necessarily be with writing. Um, but I guess what I'm suggesting is that you not give up on your curriculum and not give up on your child and recognize that your curriculum can lead you, to, if you're open to it, to seeing um, other places where you can help your child and give them some other instruction that is not maybe a part of any of your curriculums, um, but is going to benefit them in the long run. So if you have questions, let me know. I will link this in the description box. Oh, I think that's it. That's all I have. I will talk to you down in the comments.